Thanks so much for the question, and uh, maybe I'll uh, sell some some Commonwealth Picker eBay branded uh, toilet paper holders. What do you think? You think that'd sell? <laughs> Put a little sticker on it. What do you think? Got a question from Michael here. He says, Kevin, how can you remember what you paid for something two years ago? And he puts a bunch of question marks in it. So I know this might be hard to believe, but when you are a reseller, you have a pretty good idea of what you pay for items for the most part. Now, I think everybody's different. But for me, I know what I've paid because I've done the calculations in my mind most of the times for what I can pay. And I really do have a pretty good memory of where I buy certain things and how much I pay for them. Now, my wife would say I don't have a good memory. <laughs> but in this case, I really do. I would say I remember 75-80% of the items that I buy and where I bought them. I can even remember the face of the person I bought them from and how much I paid. Now, it's not obviously perfect and it's not exact. And I'm sure I make a lot of mistakes. And a lot of times... It's just because I bought that specific item so many times, I know what I typically pay. And sometimes I might get it mixed up a little bit. But I have a pretty good memory as far as that stuff goes. Not perfect, but pretty good. You guys let me know out there if you remember how much you pay for most of the stuff and where you buy it. Let me know. I've got a question from DMS. How do you get all your sold labels to print all at once? And that's, I guess, because I show that little stream of the thing shooting out of the Rolo. So it, it is very convenient at times, for sure. I don't always do it, but it is very convenient. And I was like, you know what? I'll do a little screen capture video here and put it on there. I hate doing those. A lot of times I'd rather just use my camera and show you real quick. But this one, I think, takes a little bit longer, two, three minutes. I don't take all that time. So I am going to send you in the direction of somebody who's already done a video, a buddy of mine, Steve over at Pick and Roll, and he did a really concise little video showing you how to do it step by step. I have attached it to my reply to you, but if you're watching this, go to Pick and Roll, P-I-C-K, and the symbol and roll, or you can type in, let me see if I can find the name of it here, how to bulk print, how to bulk print eBay shipping labels, eBay 101, how to, how to bulk print eBay shipping labels, and you can check that out. It is five minutes long and it will give you everything you need to know, and uh, you can tell Steve that I sent you over there. He's a terrific guy. All right, got a question here from Jane, and it has to do with the Commonwealth Picker Show and how people leave messages for me so that I can easily go through and give them a shout-out. So she says, what do you mean when you say to leave messages on the purchase instead of in the eBay system? Isn't that the same? It is. It's really a semantics problem with me, which is pretty bad considering I'm a teacher. How do we leave a message on the purchase, please, question mark, thanks. And then she talks about Pepper a little bit. So Jane, thanks so much, and you are always here, so that's awesome. What I mean by that is when you buy the, when you actually go through the process of purchasing the item, they give you an option to leave the seller a message when you're buying it. And that's when the message is, is best for me, because when I'm looking at the list of all the sold items that I'm going through in the, through in the video, it pops up and I can do that. If not, because I'll go through my messages all day long and answer people's questions, but when it comes time to ship out 20 things, I have a hard time remembering who left the message or not. So hopefully that answers the question for you, and uh, thanks for the question and thanks for the support. Question from Angel here. He says, in the intro, is that just a toilet paper holder <laughs> where you have your labels um, for the Rolo? Well, here, I'm right here. Let me just show you. Yes, it is a toilet paper holder right there. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? I thought that was a pretty good little idea. And he asks about posting a link to those labels. So I've actually never bought those labels. I actually bought a giant box at a garage sale, believe it or not. And I've never had the need to buy any more since I've had that Rolo. So I haven't even thought about it. But I will do that, and I know that you can get free ones from UPS. I don't ship UPS, so I, I feel bad getting the free ones. But uh, maybe I should start shipping UPS. So uh, I'll, I'll try and find a link in the next few weeks, Angel. Thanks so much for the question, and uh, maybe I'll uh, sell some, some Commonwealth Picker eBay-branded uh, toilet paper holders. What do you think? You think that'd sell? <laughs> Put a little sticker on it. What do you think? 
All right, we got a big question here. I just uh, I had to shoe Turner a, f a few feet away. So one advantage of having a shed in your backyard is that your kids can play hide and seek outside and you can watch them while you're doing videos or selling stuff on eBay. So here's the question, Wizard of the Wire. Hey, Kevin, enjoy your show. Thinking about doing it part time. I have a question or two or three. Could you show how you figure cost and shipping cost? Also, label printing and what type of printer you use. I hear that Dymo 4XL doesn't work good with Windows 10. So, first of all, I haven't ever used a Dymo XL 4XL, so I, I can't really commentate on that. That's the easiest question. The answer is I use a Rolo. I love the Rolo. It's sitting right here. I just love it. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's the first time I ever had a thermal printer, so I just love it, and I probably would have loved any of them. Zebra's out there, and then, of course, the Dymo. Now, the other part of the question here is about how do I figure costs? So I just really quickly in my head, I take the total cost of an item as it's sold, what the sold price is, including the shipping cost, and I just do a quick 15%. So everybody can do 10. Let's throw one out. So we've got a, a $30 item free shipping or a $20 item that costs $10 shipping. We're looking at 30 bucks for that item. So just in my head, 10% is three. 5% is a buck 50. We're, we're at four, $4.50 in fees, and then you have to ship it out, and it will probably be under the shipping cost that they paid. So then they got to ship it out, and then you've got to subtract your cost for how much you paid for the item. So a lot of people you know, will talk to me like, well, I bought this for five and I'm selling it for 10. Yeah, it's a big item, and you have to ship that thing out, and it costs 12 bucks to ship it. You know, you're only making like two bucks. So you've got to be able to practice. Uh, I would suggest that everybody out there who's, who's just starting to sell, keep a spreadsheet, how much you paid, exactly what the eBay fees are, exactly what the PayPal fees are, and even include a little bit extra for things that you don't think about. It costs gas to go out and get stuff. You have to pay for a printer. You have to pay for bags to package things in. You have to pay for bubble wrap. So that's why I get to the 15% number, even though the cost really is a little bit less than that because PayPal doesn't charge 5%, and I get a little bit of a discount on eBay for having a store and top rated and all that stuff. So I just do 15% in my head, and then uh, I always round down, and it gives me a pretty good idea how much I'm going to make on an item. But uh, I would say definitely go by the exact numbers for the first year or two until you get used to it. I have a question from Irene, and it's not a reselling question, but it is interesting. She says, I've always wondered about resellers and license plates. What's the significance of license plates? And she talks a little bit more about some other resellers. I don't know what to tell you. For me, license plates, I, I just like them. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, why do people like metal signs? And I think it takes them back to somewhere else, to some other time, and for me, that's what the plates do. You know, we, we all grew up somewhere. We all saw a certain particular license plate every day of our life. And then they change the plates. Or you move away. Or both. And you look back and you remember. As simple as they are. As complicated as they are. And you just identify. It's a sign. I think we all like to identify with some place or something. And that's why I like them. I mean... I just love them. No matter where they're from, you know, I have some that I really like. So let me show you some. So, I mean, I've never been to Idaho. That's cool. I just love the Kentucky plate. Simple. The Colorado one is amazing. Nothing to it. And really cool. And I just really like that Virginia one. I love blue. The antique one back there. Even the Michigan one. I lived in Oregon for a while. Of course, lived in California. But I'm going to put put one on every single one of these beams all the way across on both sides. I'm going to have them on both sides. So y'all send them to me and you'll get them up. I promise. Because I love them. So thanks for the question, Irene. I have a question from Tom here. And he, and he was talking about a, a Sony camcorder that I sold the other day. And he says, thanks for the insight on the camera. Ordered a battery just to verify that, the power, that it powered up and in photos, etc., would should you list as is not fully tested uh, if you don't have say the mini disc or the VHS insert and you haven't actually recorded with it if the device powers up zoom works if it technically works but unless you insert media record okay so I think this Tom and it's a very good question and and I think that this is a valuable thing for people to learn with old electronics so I'll just tell you what I do and I don't know if it's the best thing or not 
but it's what I do. Because electronics, even for me, are the most returned item. And I think for me, it's like somewhere around 2.5% for electronics. And that's the highest item that I have. I see my kids walking around out here. Turner's counting for, uh, for hide and go seek. <laughs> Ready or not, here. Did you hear that? Ready or not, here I come, he said. So here's what I do. If the thing powers up and it looks like everything's functioning well and it's in good condition, but I don't have the actual blank media and I haven't gone through the process of testing it, um, I'm going to list it. I'm not going to put as is. Okay. Now in the, in the description of the listing, I'm going to say, hey, this is how I've tested it. It is more than likely working. This is the scenario. And then I also put that I don't do partial returns. So if it doesn't work fine, I will accept a full return of that item, that item, and I will return it and pay for the return shipping. Um, just so I know people won't take it and say, hey, you said it, you know, you said you didn't test this. Well, it's not working. Well, you do a partial refund. I don't know. It's probably working and they want a partial refund and they're going to resell it. Um, that happens sometimes. So basically, if I tell them up front, there will be no partial refund, it eliminates that professional crowd a little bit. I would not list that an item as you described it as as is. I would not do that, I don't think. But you have to be willing to take those returns once in a blue moon. I think you'll end up on the better end of it if you do it that way. So I got a question from Carol here. And Carol, by the way, is a uh, longtime watcher of the show. So Carol, hope we're doing well out there. And we appreciate your questions. She says, have you ever sold something you've really missed after you've sold it? So... I have not offhand thought of anything that I regretted selling. Now, I will say this. There are a few things that I wish maybe I wouldn't have sold when I sold them because the value of them are so much higher now um, than, than they were when I sold them. But I would say there's maybe one thing, and it was only because somebody wanted it in the end. My mom wanted an old rotary phone, a certain style of rotary phone that I had at one point and I sold and then subsequently found out that she wanted and that is uh, something I regret selling because I would have rather ended up giving it to her. I ended up buying one for Christmas for one year and uh, paid a lot more than I paid for it, obviously, to begin with. So anyway, that's a great question. Let me think about it some more and I might come up with another answer. I a question from Jane and you're going to be disappointed in the answer because it's not going to solve your problem of finding these things. But she says, I've always wondered about selling clothes. Uh, and then also, where do you get the plexiglass risers that you take pictures of video games? And if you've seen those, they're little plexiglass things that I stack different things on at different levels to get the picture to look a little bit different than everybody else's and to make it look bigger. And then it attracts people's eyes to it and they click on it and hopefully buy it. At any rate, I got those from my uncle. Um, he um, gave those to me. And I don't know where he got them. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But I saw them and I'm like, hey, I want those. And he gave them to me. So that's where I got them. Uh, if you are a reseller out there and you have those, or if anybody out there knows where to find them, uh, let Jane know in the comments. Question from Vix Village. What is the app you are using to calculate the gold value on the, the gold video we did? So it's DHF Calculator. It's free, I think. Pretty sure. If I have it, it's probably free. 